Hey, Facebook. What's going on? It's your boy, Average Fisherman. Check it out. Today, we're doing the video. We're making the announcement today. We're also going to cover a little bit of fishing that I did this weekend. I was out on Rayburn. I was doing a little scouting for a tournament I got coming up. And uh, I'm going to put a couple fish catches in it. But we'll explain that all in the video. So without further ado, let's dive into today's video. <laughs> All right, today we're covering two things. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, pre-fishing. We're going to make the big announcement. And, you know, we're going to cover a little bit of fishing I had on Rayburn this past weekend. So if you want to hear the big announcement, you don't want to hear how the fishing was, please fast forward to the end. I'll put that at the end of the video. Not to make anybody mad. I'm just going to go step by step here. So this past weekend, I was on Rayburn doing a little scouting for a tournament I've got coming up. And, you know, I'm going to put a, a few of the fish catches up. And actually, I'm going to put them right here. people around. It's a good one. Dude, this fish is strong, dude. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. What a giant. Look at that toe, dude. Yes. Yes. Yes, sir. That is a Florida string bass right there. All right, there's the fish catching videos. I only put a few up, guys. And the reason why is, one, I was out scouting, and I didn't lean on the fish very hard. I didn't want to sit there and keep tearing into them. Two, everybody knows that, you know, that fish is on Sam Rayburn right now. We've got a bunch of tournaments starting to kick in. And there was a lot of people around and I didn't want to, you know, see people. I didn't want people to see me catching all these fish. Okay. I'm not a pro. All right. But there's one thing I've learned on this lake is one right now. Everybody's looking at those videos, looking at the background, trying to figure out where I was. And that is just part of tournament fishing. And as a tournament fisherman, a tournament angler. Okay. You play a game being a content creator and you want to put those fish catches up for people, but two, you're trying to keep it on the down low, if you will. Um, so you see me looking around in the video, kind of looking left and right. There was a people that were around and I didn't want anybody to see me, you know, tear into the fish out there. Another reason that I only put a couple up guys is because... I do, like I said, I don't want people, and it's no offense to anybody, but people do it. I do compete, and people are going to pull up the videos, and they're going to be like, where is he at? And they're going to look at the background. They're going to look at the lure, which I don't care if you look at the lure, really. Truth be told, like, you got to still locate the fish. You got to get set up at the right time, right place, have the right bait, which if you see the bait, no big deal. But with that being said, guys, let's talk about this a little bit. Now that I got that out of the way, Okay. So I went out Saturday. Um, what everybody doesn't understand is everybody loves to see the fish catching videos, right? And that's great. I love to put it up for you guys as a content creator. But what we don't see is, and what you guys don't see is how much work goes in 
to just locating fish and and i'm talking about locating tournament fish okay you could go to the bank you go to the grass you go out there and you can catch you know small fish schoolers and stuff right now you can do all of that um rayburn's getting in a pretty good state you know it's getting to where it's it's really in a good summertime pattern which it's kind of late you know in the year um you know the days are getting shorter it's actually nice and cool outside for once and with that all being said man nobody sees the pain that tournament anglers go through of the hours and hours up on idling everybody i'm sitting back there at the console idling around drinking water snacking looking at my graph marking stuff flipping back around you know getting different angles on things and it's painful i love to fish and you know some of the groups of fish that i found you know i would have loved to keep catching them but when you are out there practicing and searching doing a pre-pre practice if you will <clears throat> you don't really lean into your fish too hard and what I mean by that is I've had a lot of guys ask me, they're like, man, hey, how do you pre-fish? How do you go about it? Well, it involves a lot of time behind the graph, okay? It involves throwing on some fish. I usually stick a couple fish to see what's down there. And you kind of get a feel for the quality and you get a feel for how many fish are down there, you know, other than what you just see on your live scope and your side imaging. But I also rotate baits too. Um, I rotated through a plethora of baits when I was out there and I found these fish and it was nice to see them biting, you know, a little bit of everything, but there was really one key item I was getting them on. And, you know, with that being said, that's how I kind of approach the pre-fishing thing. Now, when I go out like the day before the tournament, if I've got an official practice day, I get out there, I'll, first thing I'll do is I'll go to my spots and I will idle the spots to see where those fish are. Are they, you know, shallower than what they were that day when I found them? Are they deeper? And, you know, I'll throw on them, but I won't set the hook, okay? If they're biting the same stuff that, you know, I'd caught them on the week or two weeks before, that's what, how I approach things. And my dad, I tried to teach him this, and when he comes down, he visits, you know, I don't know everything and I learned everything from my mom and dad fishing and, you know, YouTube and articles, but, uh, my dad and I had a real good talk about this, about not hooking your fish before tournaments, you know, they get a sore mouth and, you know, you're showing them everything you're going to throw the next day and fish wise up guys. Rayburn's getting hammered right now, you know, with, with a lot of stuff going on in the world with uh, COVID again, you know, and stuff starting to close down again. You know, a lot of people are going to the lake, which is great. Trust me, I love it. I love to see people out there. I love talking to you guys at the ramp. When you guys approach me at the ramp and you guys talk to me and stuff, I had somebody come up to me at the ramp this weekend and was like, hey, you're that guy that's, you know, on Facebook, average fisherman. I said, yeah, and, and it was some younger high school kids with their dad, and it was great to have that feeling. <clears throat> and, you know, it's great to see everybody out in the lake, but the fishing pressure is going through the roof. So, how am I tying all this in? Whenever I'm out there fishing, I'm going to say it again. You're going to see me looking around. I'm going to want people to see me delaying into these fish. Because the first thing they're going to do is they're going to come over there. They're going to idle over what you fished. They're going to tear your fish up. And then come your official practice time, your fish aren't going to be there. Or they're going to be deep. And they're going to be in a do-nothing mode. In that neutral mode is what I like to call. <clears throat> now... It's a public lake. Everybody can go do whatever they want. Okay. That's part of tournament fishing. Take the, take the greats. Kevin Van Dam. Jared Swindle. Jacob Wheeler. Okay. Kevin Van Dam is a great example to use. Do you know how many guys follow that dude? Especially when he was in the peak of his career. The Bassmaster Elites. You know how many guys followed him? And he went over there. And... He was catching all these fish, and the first thing people did, as soon as he left, you bet money on it, they went over there and started fishing what he was fishing. Now, either they tore into his fish, or they couldn't catch him, which brings me back to my whole point here, and I'm going to wrap that up. You still got to be set up the right way. You still got to be there right time, right place. You got to be having the bait that, you know, they're biting, and you got to give that presentation in the same manner.
okay? You put all those key elements together, yeah, you can go over there and catch fish, okay? I've seen guys come up, and they've seen me catch fish, and I leave, and I come back later, and they're right over there where I was, and they're trying to catch the fish. And, I, and I've stopped before to see if they were catching them, you know, and they weren't. And like I said, it's a public lake, and people are going to do it. But it is what it is. So, guys, that's why I don't have a lot of fish catches in the video. I'm sorry, but I do compete, and I don't want to give too much of my information away. A little bit's not going to hurt anything, okay? But a lot of bit, it could hurt you, right? So, the lake, I will tell you this. You can go shallow and catch them. You can go deep, you can catch them. You can go to your brush piles and catch them. But I'm going to tell you all this. They are not everywhere, okay? I probably idled for a good hour, hour before I found some schools of fish and they were stacked. And I went back and I checked on them Sunday. And what I'm going to tell you about offshore fishing is one day they might be one way and the next day they might be another. So just because you find fish doesn't mean it's going to work out in the tournament. doesn't mean you're going to go out there and you're just going to tear into them. They might be set up different, okay? Saturday was a great day of fishing. Um, I got some videos that I that I have, and I didn't post them because I don't like I said I don't want anybody to see the background. But I caught some really nice fish in some areas that I was like, this is this is Sam Rayburn fishing summertime, and I idled around for a long time before I found something like that. So you can catch them deep. You can catch them shallow, you can catch them in your brush piles, but don't get frustrated if you're idling around like, hey man, Chad said I'd get out here and do this. You're going to have to idle around for a while before you find them. They're not just everywhere, okay? So, lures, okay? I caught them on a crankbait. I caught them on um, Carolina rig, you know, which is pretty common this time of year. I caught them on a Texas rig. Um, bait selection. I'm just going to say this, use your water clarity in, in, you know, in accordance with bait selection. If you know the water's a little dirty, you know, fall back on your darker colors. If the water's got more of a, you know, transparency, it's clear what I'm trying to say, you know, go to your more translucent colors. Um, the size of the fleck seemed like it mattered on either day when it was bright and sunny you know, I had that uh, little smaller fleck in a lot of my stuff, and it did well. When it was kind of hazy on Sunday, I uh, went out there and I put some bigger fleck, you know, stuff on. Like, and I mean by fleck is the color of the fleck in your lure. The color that you have, like if it's blue or green, you got little pepper, you know, little bitty flecks, and then you got big flakes. Okay, so that that seemed like it played over the weekend. Guys, I went shallow for a little bit, and man, I just really didn't do well shallow. Um, you know, another thing too with with shallow is the lakes was like 0.75 low, and you know the hay grass is you know it looks healthy, and you know I found some hydrilla starting to come up, which makes me happy. Um, I hope it does come back. If it doesn't, it's going to be an interesting spawn this year, um, and where these fish are going to stage, and I'll be curious to see how that works out. But I didn't do well shallow. I caught a few, but nothing that I would hang my hat on and just say, hey, here's what I'm going to do. Um, I found the majority of my fish deeper. Um, you know, I would say 10 foot and deeper. And it really, really, really depended on just one thing. There had to be a food source there. You couldn't just go into whatever area and idle and be like, oh, there's always fish here. Mm, it's not the case right now. You got to remember that fish need a few things, okay? One, it needs to be comfortable for them. Two, there's got to be a food source available. And three, if there's plenty of food source available, they're going to set up in those ambush areas. They're going to set up in those key areas. So don't sit there and focus on fishing something that's giant. Pick those key little areas that you know bass will set up on, and they'll ambush. Okay? Uh, I did see a lot of schooling fish. I did see some pretty big schooling fish. 
and it was in the area that I was catching some fish and it, it got me excited because there's only one place they're going to go. And, you know, I kind of kept track of them throughout the day. So stick to a deeper bite if you want to catch some better fish. So let's get into the second part of the video. Okay. My big announcement. The big announcement is I have officially partnered and um, paired up with, and they're, they've uh, come on as one of my sponsors this year to support me, Gilzilla Pro Gear. What is Gilzilla Pro Gear? Okay, they are a jersey company. They make, um, there's all kinds of, what I like to call sun shirts out there. There's all kinds of them on the market. You guys know them, I'm not going to name them, okay? Gilzilla is a company that has phenomenal material and it's a great great price we all know that there's a certain brand you could go out there and you could spend money on and it's very expensive okay what i will tell you is that i was able to get my hands on their stuff at early stages um, when they were making uh this product making some changes I got with them on the product and we talked about some stuff that you don't see. Now, I've got some coming. It's it's on its way and I'm going to be excited to show it to you guys. But just to start off, they took their sun shirt and they've got a hood. They're like, what's so special about a hood? This hood has vents in it. Okay. I don't see a lot in the market that has vents on the hoods. And we got to talking about that and it's like, man, when it's hot, you know, and you've got... I like wearing the hoods because you wear that face mask and your glasses are fogging up and it's constantly falling down and yada, yada, yada. I can throw that hood up and keep the sun off my neck and, you know, put a little bit of sunscreen on my face and, and just go to town, right? They added vents to it because, you know, when you have your hood up, you start getting hot, starts getting miserable, okay? And with that being said, they added vents that go down your rib cage too. To, if you've got just the slightest breeze, it's going to keep you cool. And their material is awesome. They've actually got another product that they're gonna, they've been working on. It's a different type of material. And it's actually super exciting because, man, their stuff is thin. Okay? And nobody likes a thick sun shirt. You just get hot and get miserable, right? Um, these guys' stuff is thin, but it's durable. Okay? It's super durable. And, you know... I'm excited to get my hands on this stuff and show you guys. And man, I really, really encourage you guys to go check them out. You can, I've got their website pulled up right here uh, in the background on my computer. You can go to uh, zillagearoutdoors.com and you can also find them on Facebook. They've got two pages on Facebook. The one I'm going to tell you that uh, you could go to either or, but it's uh, Gil, G I L L Z I L L A, Pro Gear. Okay, um, they've got some awesome looking shirts and they're actually in the process of updating their Facebook page now. Um, that's one thing that I was on them about, like, hey, you need to get your Facebook page updated because when I make that announcement, people are going to start coming and looking and, you know, you guys need to check out updating that. So they're getting in the process of that. They've got a big order of shirts coming in this week. There's some on the way for me. There's another thing that they make, too, that I'm really excited about. They make a uh, heavier fleece for when it's colder during the months down here that, you know, in Texas, you get those in between months. It's kind of cold, but it's still, it comes, the sun comes out and it gets warm. They've got a great fleece for that. And I, I can't wait to get my hands on it and, and do a product review for you guys and show you guys this stuff. Okay. I'm super excited. The owners are a very family oriented type of business and they listen to their consumers about the product and they listen to their pro staff about what needs to be changed. And man, guys, I can't tell you how nice their gear is. Once again, I really like it a lot. And once again, go to zillagearoutdoors.com and you can go find them on Facebook at Gilzilla pro gear. And if you guys have any questions or you guys need need a little bit of information about them, please reach out to me and I can get you hooked up and get you talking to them or answer any of your questions you guys might have. So that's my big announcement. I'm stoked 
to be on their pro staff. I'm stoked to be working with these guys. And I'm going to tell you this. Um, I think that if any of you buy any of these jerseys, you're not going to be, you're not even going to be remotely upset. You're going to love these things. They're thin, they're durable, they're functional, and they've got a lot of big products coming up. They've got a lot of ideas. I spoke to one of the owners, I actually spoke to both of them on Zoom a while back, and I was speaking to the, one of the owners the other night, and we were just talking about ideas for the year, and guys, they've got some big ideas. And I have no doubt these guys are going to grow, and I am just ecstatic to be on the Zill Gilla, Gilzilla fishing family is what I'm trying to say. And I'm glad to be along for this journey and ride. So Gilzilla, I thank you for jumping in and being on the fishing, the average fishing fam this year. And I'm very, very excited to see what the future holds for all of us. So guys, hey, that's today's video. I didn't get too much, too much into fishing, the, the deep stuff, but I'm going to tell you this. Um, I here's my gear that I was using. I was using a Carolina rig. You can use whatever sinker you want. I was throwing a three quarters. Uh, I was pairing it with my old 18 um, suppressor series rod, seven foot six heavy. Okay, I've got it paired with fluorocarbon line. On my leader, I was using a uh, monofilament leader. The reason why is it kind of keeps your bait up a little, little higher in the water column when you're dragging it along, or you, you know, give it that flutter. And, you know, for my cranking rod, you know, I was using a uh, seven foot six medium heavy um, suppressor rod. Um, it's my cranking series rod. That it's not my cranking series rod, but it's the one I use from old eighteen, and I love it. It's super sensitive. And then uh, for uh, my jig, you know, I was using uh, the seven foot six heavy. Uh, for my jig one and you know, I've got those paired with a 701 Abu Garcia reel and they've all got uh, 15 pound fluorocarbon on them So that was my main setup guys. You guys can You know fish whatever you want. Whatever's your you know best setup for you. This is just what I use and uh, the fluorocarbon gives me sensitivity feeling and uh, I do use Seaguar. I'm not sponsored by them um, You know that's just what I like to use. Uh, my dad uses Berkeley fluorocarbon and he, you know, I fish with some of his rods, you know, like trading off and it's, it's sensitive too. So it's whatever you think that is best for you. Your rods though, what I will tell you is, is if you're going to invest in something, invest in a good rod. Okay. And I say that because when these fish are out there and they get funky and they get a weird bite going, you can feel the bite. Okay. I truly, truly believe that Old 18 has the best rods out there. And it's not because they're my sponsor. It's because I really believe it. And those suppressor series rods, they're bad mamma jammas. I love them. Their hollow point series, guys, they are amazing too. They're, they're literally, they're both Cadillacs. They're both. It's just preference. Okay. I use suppressor series rods. Okay. Rick Caldwell, a buddy of mine that is also um, on Rayburn. Um, fishing with Rick is his, is his, uh, Facebook page guys. He uses a lot of hollow points. Okay. And he loves them. It's just personal preference. Okay. Um, I'm also going to throw out there. I've got a product coming that I'm excited to get, get with you guys and show you it's from landing gear lanyards, um, landing gear lanyards. Uh, he makes, um, graph covers. And I say graph covers, what I mean by that is graph cover holders. The little bungees that go over the face of your um, cover on your graph so that the bad boy ain't in the middle of the highway somewhere and somebody ran over it. I've got some coming, and I'm excited to get my hands on those and show you guys. So Landing Gear Lanyards, go check them out on Facebook. Landing Gear Lanyards on Facebook, and you'll see a little duck, a little dog. They actually make duck calls. But he's gotten into the fishing stuff, and it, it's awesome to be a part of his little journey, too. So duck season is rolling along. I, I think duck season's coming up. I don't duck hunt, but this guy makes some phenomenal calls. Uh, call lanyards, I mean. So go check him out on uh, his Facebook page, Landy Gear Lanyards, guys. And with Old 18, use Marler, C-M-A-R-L-E-R, -E the letter C, for 15% off in their store, guys, to get that new suppressor rod, to get that new hollow point, to get a cranking rod, 
to get a rod to go fishing, okay? Um, I also want to say thanks to Rep Sports. Um, it's a supplement company, uh, repsports.com. You guys could go check them out. I drink Ray's Energy. I've actually got a little packet right here. This is what I drink when I'm on the water. It's an energy drink. It keeps me going because during the summer, man, it, it's hot with coffee. And I like putting this in my boat and got some ice. And I just dumped this little on-the-go packet. It's uh, Ray's Energy. Go to repsports.com. And you put in Chad, hashtag win. You know, you can get 20% off anything in the store. That Ray's Energy keeps you hydrated. It's not like other energy products where you drink it and you get dehydrated. That actually hydrates you. And it's it's awesome on the water, guys. So, hey. I appreciate everybody in the Average Fishing family. I love all the likes, man. It, it just like warms my heart to, to see you guys liking my videos and watching them. And if anybody has any questions about anything, about Gilzilla, about the products that, you know, these, these, uh, these wonderful sponsors support me, please don't be afraid to message me. I will answer everything that I can. So I hope everyone had a great weekend. I hope everyone's doing well. Be safe out there, guys. And as always, God bless you, and God bless the United States of America. We'll catch you all next time. Out.